The greatest obstacle to your success in life is self-doubt. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's episode of 7 Good Minutes, we learn about seven simple steps to destroy self-doubt from our friends at Top Think. Enjoy. Today, we're going to learn about seven easy steps to destroy self-doubt. Now, let's begin. Number one, learning the long way. Building self-confidence is a slow, step-by-step process. When you first decide to be more self-assured, your mind naturally jumps 10 steps ahead. You imagine yourself diving headfirst into all kinds of new challenges. You picture a future where you're not afraid to be a leader, a creator, or a pioneer. Maybe you've engineered this version of yourself that's confident, decisive, and successful. Ah, doesn't it feel like all of those huge changes could be waiting right around the corner? Well, in some ways they are. No matter what stage you're at right now, no matter how indecisive or doubtful you are, self-confidence is a realistic and attainable goal. But there's a little bit of prep work that you have to do first. Developing self-confidence is like mm, learning a new subject. Everyone wants to skip ahead to the most exciting bits at the end, right? But none of those complicated ideas will make sense unless you lay the proper foundation. Well, it's like performing surgery without learning how the human body works, or researching black holes without knowing any physics. My point here is that your groundwork plays an important role. Without that strong foundation, you can't develop real self-confidence. You won't learn how to genuinely have faith in yourself. Yeah, I know the basics don't sound as exciting on the surface, but they give you the tools that you need to be more decisive in everything you do. Number 2. Practicing inside your comfort zone So, where does the groundwork start? What's the first thing you should be doing to get rid of self-doubt? Before you can fearlessly tackle new challenges, you have to learn how to take chances. You have to practice using comfortable risks. Okay, imagine you're an amateur stuntman. For your first ever movie, you need to fall from a helicopter hovering almost a hundred feet off the ground. But you've never fallen off anything that high before. So what's the best way to learn? Should you just take the plunge and risk hurting yourself? Or should you start with something short and then gradually fall from higher and higher obstacles? Comfortable risks are just like those short falls. They give you the chance to put yourself out there in a safe environment. But what does a comfortable risk look like? Generally, it's something simple like talking to someone new or getting up in front of a crowd. The important thing is to not worry about making lasting changes or setting yourself on a new path. The entire point of this step is to get comfortable with the idea of taking risks. So it's more than okay to remain well within your comfort zone. For a more real-world example, let's say you're an artist. What would a comfortable risk look like in the context of your life? Well, you might try experimenting with a new medium. Or meeting with a group of like-minded professionals. Neither one is that different from what you usually do, but there's still things that you've never done before. There's still risks that you've never taken, and when it comes to building self-confidence, That's really all that matters. Number 3. Expanding your bubble Taking comfortable risks prepares you for this third step, pushing the boundaries of your comfort zone. Now, most of us have small, very specific bubbles where we feel strong and safe. But little by little, we can add new skills, people, and environments. Now, hold on, I'm not expecting your comfort zone to double in size overnight. I hear this piece of advice a lot. The best way to get rid of indecisiveness is to throw yourself straight into the deep end, to force yourself to either sink or swim. But what if you never learned how to swim? Why would you dive into the deep end when you don't stand a chance? Building self-confidence is a slow and methodical process for a reason. 
instead of jumping into the deepest part of the pool, start in the shallow end. Once you're comfortable in 3 feet of water, then try 4, and then 5. Eventually, you'll feel comfortable swimming anywhere in the pool. Not because you haphazardly threw yourself into the deep end, but because you slowly expanded your bubble until the entire pool fell into your comfort zone. Please keep in mind, this is about half of the entire presentation. If you're up for a treat, you should definitely listen to the whole thing. You can do so by clicking the link labeled View the Full Video on YouTube in the show notes. So that does it for this episode of 7 Good Minutes. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.